So just as a summary, this is uh, the way that we deal with prostate cancer. Uh, we know it's the most common in, in the males, uh, second leading cause. The standard is the diagnosis in pathology in most of the cases. The diagnosis is based on our, on our uh, reports. And as I mentioned uh, by David, uh, this is our group uh, now it's growing even. This is a picture of a few years ago. And we have uh, oncologists, surgeons, uh, pathologists, <laughs> somewhere. Anyway, um, based on that, um, I just want to mention the most important factors that we consider that can create uh, significant discrepancies between the diagnosis that come from outside, which patients come to our practice, to the university hospital, to be treated for prostate cancer, and they come with the report, but the, the, the treatment is going to depend, as I said before, uh, on our pathology interpretation. However, uh, not, it's not only a pathology factor, but I want to mention that the histology laboratory has a very important role, and we need to have a, a very competent, uh, well-trained technical personnel to avoid these poor histopathological path, uh, preparations. These are an example of our biopsies. We try not to put more than three biopsies in one uh, slide, and also in case that they come from different sources, they color uh, with ink to uh, distinguish these locations. But look at these ones. Uh, this is from our collection of outside cases where not even <clears throat> they are uh, parallel as they save us a lot of time to have it in this orientation, but they are at uh, different levels. So when you make this section, you're going to cut areas that are not going to be leveled with the rest of the biopsies and miss important uh, lesions. This is uh, what I call the Italian spaghetti uh, presentation of uh, prostate biopsies. They were like more than 10, and they just decided to throw them all in the same block, and all these are from the same patient. Uh, here is what you see. If they are crossing over, you are going to miss significant uh, elements for diagnosis, and that is going to be impairing your final report. In regards to the pathology reports, uh, we need to be constantly updated. Uh, Gleason grading since uh, 1963 uh, uh, to now has gone through more than five or six revisions and constantly different uh, upgrades and low grading. And we need to be uh, aware of that. And second, the communication between all the other specialties that uh, I want to mention another anecdote that I call one of my colleagues, not in pathology, not in GU, uh, in the specialty, but from other, uh, in, in the different specialties, to send me some clinical history on his patients. And he told me, he was one of the heads of the service. No, you just told me what you see under the microscope. You, we, I don't have time to send you clinical history. So another way that the culture uh, sometimes downgrades the role of the pathologist. So one of the first um, elements where we find discrepancies are in the evaluation of the Gleason score. And as you know, it's going to be critical for the kind of the, uh, treatment we're going to provide to the patients. And a few years ago, in 2011, we published these uh, results where at the beginning of the paper, we compare the discrepancies in different uh, years through different authors in which the undergrading of Gleason is the predominant uh, factor for discrepancies. As well, as you can see here, all these cases were part of the publication were diagnosed as Gleason 3 plus 3. And if you consider that 3 plus 3 is kind of a benign cancer, is one of the turtles in, in the system, uh, and it's not going to kill the patient, then we put the patient in watchful waiting or some other more conservative treatment. But here, you can see that most of the tumor is Gleason 4, and this was called Gleason 3 plus 3. And we are seeing also cases that people who have been diagnosed with 3 plus 3, uh, two or three years later, come with a metastatic cancer, and when we review in a retrospe what I call the retroscope, uh, those biopsies, they were not really 3 plus 3, and the urologists, with all uh, confidence, uh, trusting in the pathologist, they treated the patient based on what they saw in the report. 
This is another case of 3 plus 3 diagnosed outside our practice that was typical of 4. So these are the differences in downgrading uh, that were presented, uh, also part of this uh, work. And in addition to the Gleason uh, discrepancies, we also find uh, elements that are not being mentioned in the diagnosis, like, for example, the invasion of fat tissue. Fat tissue, I've never seen fat inside the prostate. There is only a report, of course, that uh, medicine is not a black and white uh, science, and uh, only in Australia, in some of the indigenous uh, people of Australia, in some autopsy cases, there was a paper where they described fat inside of the prostate. But if you find fat invaded by the tumor, like here, for example, these are elements that were not diagnosed in, in the outside reports, and we had to include them in the diagnosis. The perineural invasion as well it has created great controversies, but the bottom line is now these two in, uh, important factors in the diagnosis of perineural invasion as well, uh, the thickness of the nerve that is being invaded and the number of perineural invasions that you have in the patient. They have significant, uh, uh, as you can see here, this is a very thick nerve that it needs to be reported because it has a high correlation because this thickness of nerves are very close to the extra prostatic space, and we need to report them because these patients correlate very well with extra prostatic extension in the radical prostatectomy, and this is a ganglion, also in a core biopsy that is invaded, and ganglions are outside of the prostate, and they have to be reported as well. Here you can see the, in this paper that uh, from this uh, ch uh, group uh, where you can compare the thickness of the, the nerves uh, in regards to the recurrence of this uh, cancer in these patients after prostatectomy. Uh, finally, the high-grade pain is something that is being uh, disregarded in many cases, and it's important not when this is a single focus, probably doesn't have much relevance, but uh, the multifocality is extremely important, and is need, uh, we need to uh, present it and confirm this uh, lesion with the proper stains. In this case, it's a pink cocktail. We can see this pink uh, lesion here uh, in relationship with some cancer lesions. And then uh, overcalling. Uh, this is a very common uh, factor, uh, discrepancy, uh, when they confuse some of our pathology colleagues, the central zone that is normally a very complex gland with glands within glands with high-grade pain. This is normal. The biopsy has reached an unusual area of the prostate, and we need to be careful and not to call, overcall it as um, uh, uh, high-grade pain. And finally, this example that just an, a week ago come to uh, practice uh, to our second opinion. We have this uh, focus, a small focus of three plus three, that in your practice with a sink 5.9 nanograms per ml, this is a, a patient that, that was uh, a 65 year old Caucasian male, it had a large prostate as well. But anyway, we review it, and well, we have individual glands, maybe confused with a Cleason three plus three, but then, this is a ductal adenocarcinoma, it's a four plus four. So from a group grade one, this patient went upgraded to a grade group four and with the consequences of uh, uh, treatment, etc. So the summary, Gleason score uh, yeah, and other factors are important. Uh, the lo uh, lower Gleason score uh, uh, in uh, omission of uh, other histopathological lesions is important as well. And we recommend that any, uh, I think the majority of uh, colleagues here are in major institutions. You need to always have uh, these cases that come from outside review by uh, specialists, uh, pathologists, especially in GEU pathology. Thank you.